Hello and welcome to the Slippy Limpets video. Today we are out back on the boat again. Again. Uh, I'm obviously getting as much use out of this as I can before winter comes. <laughs> it's quite windy. A little bit rougher though as I was, I was expecting. So it's blowing 25 offshore gusting. Should calm down a wee bit, but I don't know. It'll be alright though, it's not too bad. What we're going to do is um, hopefully try and catch uh, a tow. Yeah, we're going to not go, go too far out. We're going to hug the shore and find some little steep drop-offs. So uh, let's get going. I'm currently, don't know if you can see this, anchored on top of this little point here. And we're going to fish down this uh, the side of this steeper um, drop-off. So we need to get some bait. Probably just gonna fish with one rod. I don't know how long I'm gonna last in all honesty. I don't know, we'll see how it goes. Get some bait, get some fish, tank it back in. Uh, to catch me bait. Oh, speak of the devil. Uh, because I'm at anchor, I'm using um, Uh, a slow jig. I'm casting it from here so I can cover more water. But I've got a little string of um, pink shrimps for extra enticement. Well, that didn't take very long at all. First cast. Let's get a bait in the water. Feels like the wind's dying down a wee bit, which is kind of what was forecast. But we've got a bait in the water. We're pretty deep. We're currently at 54, so we're at 54 foot. That's where I'm anchored. But um, the drop off goes down about 10 meters. I'm gonna give this five minutes and then get an, another rod out, I think. Just to maximize my chances, maybe get a little bit further out. One thing I do need, which I didn't think I'd ever say, is a bait table. I was purely going to use this for lure fishing, but uh, there's other species I haven't caught and different techniques I haven't tried fishing. So bait table, some more rod holders, and some way of keeping a line away from the motor at the back when you're at anchor. If anyone knows how, please let us know, that would be great. We're supposed to cast further away from the boat, but when it's swinging around like this, it just seems to go everywhere. Look like a doggy bite. Yep. Or maybe not a doggy. What is it? Yeah, it could be. It's quite I find this quite exciting about the bait fishing at the sea, off the boat. In fact, just in general, you never know what it's going to be. Huss.
Aye, aye, aye. Straighten up, fella. Well, there we go. Second ever huss. This one's a wee bit smaller, but he's a little bit more sprightly. Good colours on them. Let's get it back. There we go, he's relaxed. We like a shot. Yay, we haven't blanked again. I was just actually starting to make a coffee. I was thinking oh, I'm going to be here a while because I've just come to some random spot. Well, they're all random for me. I don't know where, where to go or where to fish. So uh, the weather dictated where we were here. But uh, aye, first fish on the deck. Let's see if we can get a bigger one. Do you know what? I'm just, these are so small. I'm just going to leave the bones in. Fish don't mind, they don't take the bones out. Next bait in the water, caffeine time. Chucking it down. Seems really benign in the little cuddy, but uh, uh, it's coming this way. Yeah, it's wet. This whole boating thing's a learning process for me, and that was a schoolboy era. Cast out the side of the boat, and the boat's swinging a lot. And I've gone and got pulled into a snag. Only using 20 pound braid and this is a Century Eliminator boat 12 to 20 pound class, so the light one. But it's still pulling the boat around. Oh, my coffee's getting cold. Bing! Oh. Just tying on a new leader. I've already tied the uh, rig onto the bottom of the leader. So the leader is, uh, it's probably, it's all probably too light tackle, but I just like fishing with light tackle. Leader is 100 pound Berkeley uh, big game. And I'm attaching that to me 20 pound Tazlan Elite braid with a, an FG nut. I've got about, I don't know, 20 foot of big game with a sliding boom on. I'll show you in a second. Uh, it's quite long, uh, and this is another reason why I'm tying an FG. Uh, because just in case a fish starts wrapping up in, in the line, it starts wrapping up, then got more chance with a longer leader. There's a the leader. <laughs> Probably a bit longer than 20 foot, actually. I've got bead at the top. There's no knot at the top, it's just to protect the eye on the rod if I wind up that far or um, maybe if it gets trapped on my FG knot. A little cheapy sliding boom thing. Another bead, swivel, and then I've got another length of about six foot, 100 pound. Now this is to get a flowing trace, a longer flowing trace, because the first time I tried this uh, I used, was using a wire rig like this. This is a Cox and Roll 8O tote rig. And it was bang on to the lead. So it was, yeah, I think it spooked the fish. So I started tying on a bit of a longer sort of uh, trace to that. So again, I've left the, uh, the backbone in this. Everything I watched online and read, people say you take the backbone out, but it's got a lot of uh, flavour in there, like you're losing half of the guts. I'm probably doing something wrong, so if anyone knows why you take all the backbone out when you're making a flap air, let us know, that would be great. Another question. 
there's kind of rule reversal here. A lot of uh, channels give out tips and things. I just say what I do and then uh, if it works, it works. It doesn't, it doesn't. But uh, yeah, <laughs> how do you stop the boat swinging so much at anchor? The Berkeley Trilean, big game stuff's quite expensive. It was 20 quid for this 100 metre reel of, uh, or spool of, um, of 100 pounds. Sorry, 110 yards, which I think is, yeah, 100 metres. But you get this great little bag, and this is all my sea fishing kit in it. I've got some rigs, float, and uh, feathers, and my leads, a bit of bait and elastic, all in one handy little pouch. Oh, this isn't a huss. Well, it might be. Wow, that's one of the biggest jellyfish I've seen. Yeah, this is... Well, I had a good run, but then just kind of given up. I'm assuming it's probably going to take off again. Went for under the boat. Oh, I've just seen a little bit of colour there. This is quite a big fish. I think I might have to tie this out a little bit. No, oh, the end's just dropped off new new reel. Uh, the next problem is going to be how to handle these things. Got no idea. I'm a little bit intimidated by the. It's only we, but it is. I think it's a top. Yep. It's a wee one, but still, still got teeth. might actually fit in the net. <laughs> no, it won't. That's being hopeful.
has the hook out. Well, there we go. Target species. Just a wee one. I think this could be, apart from fishing with the locker, the biggest fish I've pulled out of the sea. Whoa, it's heavy. Whew. Yes. Well, that wasn't too bad. I don't know what I'd do if I caught a big one. <laughs> Mint. Oh, I can't believe it. Well, unfortunately, I've got no more bait. I know these things hunt around together in packs, so unfortunately I can't just drop down and get another one. Get some more bait. Get some more sharks. Sharks. Get some more fish. Oh, that was so exciting. And we're fishing again. Oh, and the rain stopped as well. Lush. Let's see if we can get a bigger one. Well, one thing, one thing's for sure. I now know the difference between a what they call a scream and run, and the bottom when the boat's swinging. It's pretty defined, isn't it? I can't mistake that again. Oh, getting a bite on that rod. Bloody boy, bead. Oh, look at it on the surface. Oh, this is a bigger fish. Bead. What's happened is the uh, the beads come up on the over the top of my FG knot. The bead's too small for the line, really. It, Made a schoolboy error here again. There's going to be a lot of these in these new boating videos because uh, I've got no idea what I'm doing. But the leader now won't go through the hole in the bead. Luckily, this shark's just. Sorry, this fish is. Uh, Clear nicely for the moment, but I might just have to handball it in. Handball, handline. Yep.
there's a trace. Bigger this one. Easy tiger, easy, easy, easy. Woo! Oh, the hoop just fell out. <laughs> oh, there we go. Oh, look at the size of that. Hook through the bottom lip, so a tiny little bit of blood, but it's there. We go the side of that. Yes. Oh, they are fast. Oh, it's definitely a learning experience. <laughs> I'm shaking. <laughs> so I need to retie that leader, get rid of the bead, because that's uh, to do my head in. I quite like to catch one on my spinning rod now. <laughs> I mean, it's good fun with this light rod, but I've had a well, circa 60 pound blue shark on my uh, spinning rod. The same one I've been catching mackerel with. He's got a hook in his peck before. Did you see the scar in his peck? No, I didn't see it, no. Oh, did you hit one of the hook? Look at the nippers on that. Don't go. No, I'm not going to. I'm not going to. Stick with this. So, shopping list. I need some new traces. Also, need some beads with bigger holes in them. Because uh, that knot's perfect, but the thickness of this uh, 100 pound trilene, it's trilene big game, it's just uh, aye, it's too much for these wee beads. Right, so I've retied that leader. Put a absolutely brilliant knot on. And then I'm gonna just Well let's see if we can get another fish. It's about quarter to five now. Uh, low tides at about six. I really hope I can get back into where I launched. I don't know if I can, it's the first time I've been here, so uh, I'm guessing I should be able to. Just don't want to put my car in the water, that's all. Either that, or just spend the night fishing. <laughs> I've got lights, got loads of food, got a couple of beers in the cool box. Uh, I've just got no sleeping bag or anything, but I'm warm enough. Loads of kit on. Oh, could be on again here. Yeah. Oh, 
how long do I leave it? Right, I'm going to log in. Oh. Gone again? Just snagged. Eh? I must have pulled the uh, the bait out of her mouth. Thought that it had come off, and then uh, I straight into a snag. Damn. Oh. oh. Well, we're not finishing on a flourish. Damn it. Anyway, I think it's time to head back in. Really, really need an old new setup. And it keeps us fit. the tides there was a 0.6 meter low and the all the landum spots dried out so got there at about five o'clock got the uh so checked around all the spots at about five o'clock and then uh realized i couldn't get in so i ended up mooring up for five hours uh and then trailered the boat in um yeah pitch black basically some uh some crafty positioning of head torches and things so i could see where i was going down the narrow slipway and uh into the water as well but i did it and uh i've just packed up have bacon and egg coffee of course and now i'm about to head home um yesterday fishing was pretty good actually um target species was got well, target species was caught. I didn't think it would uh, produce much, but fishing was all right, actually. I know people catch hundreds of taupe in a go, well, hundreds, that's an exaggeration, but lots of taupe in a go, but I was quite happy to get one or two, um, learn how to handle them. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't get a monster in some respects, but uh, next time uh, I do want a monster. That would be great. Um, learn loads and uh, yeah. Really hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, leave a comment, like, and subscribe, and all that YouTube jazz. And uh, until the next one, thanks very much for watching in tight lines. Go.